Hey guys, let's get more news about Miami Heat, but first don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Heat urged to part ways with $120 million 20-point scorer. If the Miami Heat don't reach their goal of winning a championship, some changes may be in order. They've gone on long playoff runs, but they've failed to get over the hump. One possible way they could improve is by trading Tyler Harrow. Bleacher reports Zach Buckley explained why it might be in the Heat's best interest to trade Harrow. Miami should ditch the idea of Harrow becoming a star and use him to help cover up areas of need elsewhere. Maybe he paves a path to the kind of size the Heat have lacked around and behind, Bam Adebayo. Perhaps Harrow helps deliver a lockdown defender with a reliable outside shot, or someone who'd better fit with Terry Rozier than Harrow can, Buckley wrote in an April 4 story. Buckley did not elaborate on who the Heat should acquire in exchange for Harrow. It might be difficult for them to trade him, as he's in the first year of a four-year, $120 million contract. Harrow has played in 36 games during the 2023-24 season. He's averaged 20.8 points per game during that time. He has averaged 20 points per game for three consecutive seasons dating back to the 2021-22 season. Despite Harrow's talent, he continues to be unavailable for the Heat. The Sun Sentinel's Ira Winderman reported that the Heat will be without Harrow for their game against the Philadelphia 76ers. Tyler Harrow again is listed as out for the Heat for Thursday night as he deals with medial tendinitis in his right foot. Thursday will be the 20th consecutive game missed by Harrow, who last played in the February 23rd road victory over the New Orleans Pelicans, Winderman wrote in an April 3 story. Harrow is not new to struggling with injuries. He missed almost the Heat's entire Cinderella playoff run in 2023 and struggled to stay on the court during their playoff run in 2022. Harrow's absence could be consequential for where the Heat place in the Eastern Conference standings. They currently stand at 42-33, which ranks them as the number six seed in the conference. The Sixers are a game and a half behind them as the number eight seed. Winning this game could give the Heat some cushion in the play-in race. If they lose, that could be all the difference in potentially missing the playoffs altogether. Though Harrow was prominently featured in trade talks during the 2023 NBA offseason for Damian Lillard, Pat Riley said he did not actively try to trade Harrow. I will say this, that we never offered Tyler in any trade, we've never shopped him to anybody, Riley said, according to According to Winderman. It's just part of the business. Things could change in the 2024 NBA offseason. Harrow has proven what he can do as a scorer from the very get-go. However, he's also proven that he can't stay on the floor for the last few seasons. The Heat could trade him for someone who not only helps them more, but someone who is sturdy enough to withstand both the regular season and the postseason. 76ers Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey's on-court reunion was okay, per Nick Nurse. The first game Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey played together since January ended in a massive victory for the Philadelphia 76ers. Their stars came up clutch and beat the Miami Heat, keeping their chances at avoiding the play and going stronger. Maxey dominated to the tune of 37 points, 11 assists, and 9 rebounds while Embiid recorded 29 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists. Both played stout defense and prevented the Heat from winning the season series. Embiid and Maxi had a spectacular two-man game going to start the season, each feeding off the talent of the other to melt defenses. When Embiid went down with a meniscus injury and missed two months, Maxi was thrust into the spotlight as the main option. Nick Nurse is surely looking to get them back to where they were. He admitted that he sees a lot of work required to get them there. It was okay. I think I kept saying to myself, go a little more to man action. I thought there wasn't a ton, Nurse said to reporters. There was a couple of kickbacks, pick and pop three, a couple here and there. But usually, there's an action and then Tyrese will chase it again. I didn't think he was doing some of that yet. 
Embiid still not having his legs fully under him will obviously lead to some shortcomings for the Sixers on both sides of the ball. He still has to learn how to play with Kyle Lowry, Buddy Heald and campaign. Even with a guy like Maxi, with whom he has plenty of chemistry, there's a readjustment period. Nurse will be looking to get Embiid and Maxi back to doing the chase action, where Maxi passes the ball to Embiid and immediately turns it into a dribble handoff to unlock more possibilities in the offense. Additionally, Nurse suggested that the team has to tighten up and that the coaching staff can help with that. Listen, I'm super happy we won the game, but we're disorganized right now. Like, we're not executing stuff very well, he continued. I thought all three quarters were like 8-0 to zero runs by them. We just didn't finish the quarters. I thought we as a coaching staff need to do a better job of who's starting the second and fourth quarters again. I know it's difficult because guys are in and out all the time, but I thought we needed better. Those lineups just didn't seem to have the right feel. Embiid said that he felt a little bit better in his second game back from his injury return. With Maxi sidelined, he led the Sixers to a win over the shorthanded Oklahoma City Thunder on Tuesday. On top of taking pride in his defense, Embiid said that his goal is to draw defensive attention to get his teammates good shots. With Maxi back, it's much, much easier. Like I said last game, I'm just here to get all these guys open, Embiid said to reporters. He was pretty open today, so I'm happy that he took care of his own business. He made shots, he made them pay for the way they were guarding. Maxi assisted Embiid four times against the Heat and the inverse happened twice. The big man set screens at the top of the key that helped free the speedy guard up for pull-up jumpers and drives. I mean, we did pretty good tonight. It can be better for sure, but, yeah, I think we were good, Maxi said. I think we knew what we had to run. It's funny, gotta get some of the new guys acclimated to the cutting and the spacing in certain situations. But I think it was good. The fact that the 76ers simply have both stars healthy now is great news. They will hope that Tobias Harris can recover from his current left knee injury as quickly as possible as they continue their final road trip of the regular season. Heat Injury Updates Good news for Tyler Harrow, bad news for Terry Rozier. Tyler Harrow is traveling with the Miami Heat for the upcoming three-game trip and there is optimism he can be back in the lineup as soon as Friday's game in Houston, according to the athletic Shams Charania. Harrow, who has been out since February 23 with knee and foot injuries, received a PRP injection in his right foot three weeks ago and has been ramping up to a return. When asked before Thursday night's loss to the 76ers if Harrow would play again this season, Eric Spolster replied, We'll let you know. Adding Harrow to the mix comes at an important time as the Heat are jockeying for a guaranteed playoff berth. Thursday's loss dropped Miami back to seventh, a half game behind the sixth place Indiana Pacers. Wins on Friday, in Houston, and Sunday, in Indiana, would put the Heat on track to climb out of the seventh seed and the play-in tournament. Harrow has been limited to just 36 games this season but is averaging career highs in points, 20.8, three-point shooting percentage, 39.9, and assists, 4.4. A potential Harrow return becomes even more meaningful if Terry Rozier is forced to miss time because of a knee injury he sustained at the end of Thursday night's game. With less than 15 seconds left in the game, Rogier bumped knees with 76ers guard Tyrese Maxey and crumpled to the floor as he grabbed at his left knee. He needed some help getting off the court after the final buzzer. I don't know what happened but I'm good now, though, Rogier said in the locker room, where he was walking with a noticeable limp. I'll be all right. If Rogier is forced to miss time, getting Harrow back can help replace some of the scoring Rogier has recently provided. Over his last four games, Rogier is averaging 26.3 points and has made several tough shots at the end of the shot clock to bail out Miami's offense. And you, fan, what do you think of the situation of Terry Rogier? Leave your opinion in the comments.